Hi guys, welcome along to my next tutorial. In this one, we are going to be building a simple rock, paper, scissors game using Python. We're going to be using the Moo Python editor to make this. So some of you may have used this before. It's uh, a free program that's available from their website, code with full stop Moo, M-U. And uh, it's available on Mac, Windows, Linux. And their website has great how-to guides to get started, load, save programs, that kind of stuff. And uh, so check it out. So this is the program that I've opened at the moment. And it's asking us, just giving a little welcome, welcome along to Rock, Paper, Scissors game. And it's asking us now, choose one of the following, Rock, Paper, Scissors, but using the lowercase r, p, or s. So I'm going to go or, and I'm going to press enter. So, and it shows up or versus, so the computer has picked or as well. So it's a draw. Let's try that again. I'll run it one more time. I'm going to go pick P. Now, so the computer has beat me. So, very simple. So let's uh, get started on seeing how we code this. So the first thing, when you open up Moo, you want to check and make sure that you're in the right mode. So by default, it should start in Python, which you can check down the right-hand side, but just in case, or sometimes when you install it, I'm not sure, on Windows, it may ask what mode do you want to start in. So it might pop up with a select mode. Now there's a couple of different ones here, Microbit, CircuitPython, ESP, MicroPython, they're all to do with um, little circuit boards and stuff like that. Pygame Zero, it's a great one for writing kind of 2D games like Mario and stuff like that. I will be doing a tutorial later on on that. But we want Python 3. So we just select it and click OK. And then the main buttons we're going to be using is just the new, load, save, and run. So obviously we click new to create a new file and it opens up here like in a tab and it's by default it's called untitled. So, and it always has this line here, but we can always just delete it, we don't need it. Now for best practice, I always like to save my projects um, as soon as I start them. So I'm going to click on save. Now I have my folder, I'm on a Mac, and I have my folder sitting on the desktop and I've just called it rock paper. And I'm just going to call the file just RPS. So I'm saving it into my folder on the desktop and it's going to be just a Python file. So I'll click save and you'll see now the tab here has changed to the file I just gave, which is great. So what we're going to be doing is in our game, we are going to have the welcome message pop up and then we are going to ask the player to choose or uh, rock, paper or scissors using the lowercase letters R, P and S. And then we're going to get the computer to randomly pick uh, a choice. And the way we're going to set this up is we're going to get the computer to pick a number between one and three. And we're going to assign a value. One will be rock, two will be paper and three will be scissors. So let's get stuck into it. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to import the module that we're going to be using to allow the computer to randomly generate that uh, number between one and three. So we start off and we go from random import rand int. So basically what this is, is from the module random, we're going to import the small little snippet called rand int, which is short for random integer. So we can then press enter and we can start a new line where we can just put in our welcome message using a simple print statement. So we type print and then we do open our brackets. Now, always in a print statement, it's what's known as a string, which is a collection of characters, letters, words, numbers, stuff like that. And they always go between quotation marks. So you can have single quotation marks or double quotation marks, but just be careful, whichever one you choose. So if you open with double quotation marks, you have to close your print statement with double quotation marks. I'll show you that now in a minute. So we are gonna say, Welcome along to my rock, paper, scissors game. So when I close the brackets correctly, or the quotation marks correctly, the red line disappears. If I was to use single quotation marks, the way they're different, it won't allow me to close it. So 
double quotations, and then we close our brackets. Now to get these brackets up, it's shift and nine for the left bracket and shift and zero for the right bracket. So let's just test that out now. So if we go run our game, we'll see, there we go. Welcome along to my rock, paper, scissors game. So pretty straightforward. So we can now press stop and that'll get us back into coding. Now, just to space out the game a little bit, I'm going to put in just an empty print statement. And this is the same now as using kind of pressing enter in Microsoft Word. It's just kind of making a space between two paragraphs, that kind of a thing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the player input. So I've just pressed enter twice now to space it out. Uh, I like my code spaced a little bit because it makes it easier for me to read and also to go back over again. So we are going to um get the input from the user and it's going to be either rock paper or scissors using the lowercase or p or s and we're going to store that input in a variable called player so just to do a quick recap a variable is imagine it like a container or a box and we can use it to store stuff so in programming it's like storing data so that can be letters numbers characters um that kind of stuff so we are going to start off by creating our variable so player is equal to and then we go input so we need to get the and then we're going to ask the question so this is just like a string before so we go choose one of the following and now i've put a colon here you don't have to this is just for pure text you can have a comma if you want but i just want a colon and we're going to go rock, and then we do, oops, bracket, lowercase, or, um, scissors, oops, sorry, no, paper, paper next, sorry, paper, and lowercase p, and finally, scissors, and lowercase s, okay, and then we need to oops, close our quotations and close our brackets. So if we run this, it's now going to print our welcome message. It's going to have a little space here from the empty print statement. And now it's saying, choose one of the following, R, P, or S, and it has our little cursor here. So we can try it actually, we'll just press S. And as you can see, nothing happens because we haven't told the computer what to do once we have chosen our um, turn. So it's going to stop our code. So what we need to do now is we need to print out what we've chosen. So we can go print, and we're going to say player, and then we're going to do a cool thing. This is now where we're going to get the computer, start to get the computer involved. So we'll just do a little string, vs, oops, as in versus, and then we are just going to close the brackets. So for the moment, when I run, we're going to click, pick R for rock, so it says R versus blank. Now that's perfect. That's what we want for the moment. So this is working. So it shows up the choice that we make and it also puts in versus. So now we need to set up what's going to happen for the computer and how the computer is going to generate their code. So what we'll do, stop our program, enter twice onto a new line. And this time now we're gonna go and Create a variable called chosen. So this is what the computer is going to choose. And we are going to, now this is where we use our rand int or a random integer. So we go rand int and we are going to get it to pick one to three. So every time it will pick a random number between one and three. So now we've set up the computer to randomly pick a number between one and three. And we're going to store it in the variable called chosen. So the next thing we can do is just test out and see what the computer does with this random integer. So by using the print statement, we're going to print the variable chosen. So let's run this now and you'll see, uh, choose one of the following, so pick R. So R versus, and it's blank, that's fine, but on the new line, we now have two which means now it's picking the random integer from the numbers one to three. So we'll stop it and we're just gonna try one more time. And this time we're gonna pick P for paper. That's the same again. 
So if you keep trying it now, sometimes like here, it'll pick the same number a couple of times in a row, but that's uh, no problem. But at least now we know that it's working. So we can actually delete this now for the moment because we don't need it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set up, we're going to assign the numbers to correspond to the rock, paper, scissors. So we're going to have number one will be rock, number two will be paper, and number three is going to be scissors. And we're going to do that now by using an if, elif, else loop. Now, some of you may remember this from scratch. It's um, the big kind of e shape loop that we've used before. So basically, if it's equal to one, it's going to be rock. If it's equal to two, or elif, if it's equal to two, it's going to be paper. Or finally, else, it'll be scissors. Okay, so we're going to start off now and I'll go if chosen is equal to one. Oops, let me do our colon. Now, just in case, if you notice why I have two different equals here, so if two equals here and there's a single equal equals here, when we use in Python, when we use the two equals together, that means it's equal to or it's the equality operator. And then if we have the single one, it means we're assigning. So basically, whatever the random number that's being generated here is being assigned to the variable chosen. So come back here to our if loop. So if chosen is equal to one, press enter. Now we're going to create a new variable and we're going to store. So we're going to put in computer. I'm going to use that as a new variable. And we're going to have that assigned to, oops, where's my mouse? I'm going to have assigned to or, so the lowercase or. Okay. And then we're going to go elif chosen is equal to two colon, press enter. I'm going to say computer is equal to P for paper. We'll go on new line, backspace till the edge, and we're gonna go finally, else, colon, computer is equal to, yes, there we go. Now, so we can just test this out now by, at the very bottom, we can do, oops, a print computer. I just think it's a bit easier to work with the computer variable than the chosen variable. It's more, it's easier to understand. So now we're going to test out this print statement and see if we get back or P or S. So I'm going to run my code. It's going to ask us to pick another, so going to R. And now we can see it says R V S. And now it says S on the new line, which means that the randomly generated number has now been assigned to either rock, paper, or scissors which is pretty cool. However, I don't like the way it's now sitting down here. So we want to be able to pull it up here and we can actually do that with a simple little thing. So if we go up to our print player and the VS line, just after the quotation marks, we can go comma and we can go end equals and then we go quotation mark, space, quotation mark. So what that means is at the end of this line, we don't end with a new line, we end with the space, which pulls up the computer variable. So let's just test that. So if we go over, perfect. So now you see the computer's choice now, so it's player versus computer. So that's cool. So now we have the first part of our game set up. The next thing we're gonna do is actually set up the rules for our game now. So. This is going to be, we'll be able to check the results of when the player, what the player variable is against the computer variable and see who wins. What we're going to do is come down here below the print computer variable, press enter twice. Now, what you probably notice in the video description, I've added in a whole bunch of elif loops. Now they're actually the rules. So I just thought it'd be a bit easier rather than if I was to put them down there and you guys can copy them in rather than watching me type them all out. And uh, so I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to set up the first one for you guys um, to show you what happens when uh, it's a draw. So we're going to start off our if loop. So we go if and we're going to have player is equal to computer. And we're going to have our comma. And we're just going to print out draw. I'm just going to have it in all caps. So 
What this is doing is that if the player variable is equal to the computer variable, we're going to get the print statement draw. Now we have the two equal sign because we're checking to see if both these are the same. So I'm just going to check that out now. I'm just going to try rock. Nope. Try again. Now, there we go. So you'll see that I chose rock and the computer chose rock. So it's a draw. That's brilliant. So what I'm going to do now it's going to bring in the other uh, elif loops. So we have to make sure our cursor is set up first. So after our closing bracket here, I'm going to press enter and then get it just back over to the edge. And I'm going to copy in now the other rules from the video description. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six more rules. So basically it goes through all the eventualities, if I was to pick rock and the computer picked uh, scissors um, and so on and so forth. So let's check it out and see what happens now. So I'm going to run the game and I am going to pick or and there we go straight away computer wins. And we're going to try again and we're going to pick S this time. That's a draw. Ooh. I'm going to try one more. I'm going to pick P and player wins. Cool. So there we have three goes, and there's been three different outcomes. So that's pretty cool. So what I want you guys to be able to do is see if you can change around the rules, make up your own rules, and uh, have different messages pop up, and see what happens now. You can change up the rock, paper, scissors. See if you can have different items, like spoon, fork, and knife, or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but do play around with it, and we'll see you then in the next tutorial.